In Magic and Mayhem moments, we are really talking about Lord God, the Mother Earth, and openly any sort of faith that is in the world of light. Light being practically how people relate to one another and bring about the literal best in their souls and in their hearts and in their minds. It's about raising people up. It's about helping them to reach literally higher vibrations, as some energy workers call it. Or openly, it's just about singing this to the soul of an individual. I once sung to a girl, and it was sort of a silly song, but on openly, it was a little ditty that I put together in hopes that she would marry me. Unfortunately, it hasn't come to pass yet, but I'm still hoping for that particular girl to give me half a chance. But, you know, that's what love is like. It doesn't ever leave us when it's in us. Now, we can talk about the love of God. We can talk about the praise that we should be providing him or her or whatever entity you literally believe in that's in the light area of the world. But mostly, we might like to talk about something absolutely silly today. Like, for example, if I pretend to be Annie Rooney, who is an old-time journalist who only probably people of my generation and older really know about and remember before his passing, that literally we might talk today about toilets. Now, what the heck is with these toilets that are put at the back of a restaurant? Did someone not think? I mean, normally someone's coming in from a long day's work. They literally want to stand in line, perhaps, for a table, but during that period of time, they want to go and wash their hands and come back to their families. They don't want to traipse through an entire restaurant, crossing all the food paths of everyone else, smelling all the different smells of everyone else, which isn't always the most pleasant if you have a lot of sensitivities to smell, and openly get into a toilet that's sort of clean, sort of not clean. Why? Because everybody's trashed it at the back of the restaurant. You see, literally, when it's at the front of the restaurant, it gets a little bit more attention by people because they realize it's a part of their hospitality, it's part of their entry, and let's face it, let's really talk about this. What is with those places that won't allow people to use a restroom? Now, in one particular cooking place, I was actually appalled. The restaurant, the restroom was right in the middle of the entire kitchen, so it was sort of odd to walk into the dining room through their literal kitchen and into this teeniest, tiniest little dunkiest place that was full of a closet of all sorts of cleaning supplies, plus a tiny little stool. Now, why am I making fun of that? Because it just was a bad layout. It was a poor purchase of a restaurant. But openly, they had good food, and I can't even remember what state I was in at that moment in time. It might have been Ohio. I don't really remember. It's been a lot of places, and I don't remember every single spot unless I look over my receipts or I have jogs of memory with God helps me with. Now, openly, when I look above, it's because I notice that my lights are on with the <clears throat> opening of my trunk, and I might fix that a little bit later. But what I'm really talking about today is toilets. Now, why would I put that out there? Because, frankly, it's offensive that there are companies that literally won't allow a stranger off the street to borrow a toilet. Now, if they're borrowing the toilet to do something illicit, that's one thing. If they're literally just borrowing the toilet because, God forbid, their body needs some help at that exact moment in time before there's a literal accident in their pants, how dare you say no to someone who desperately needs to use the lavatory? Sure, there are people who try to use that ploy to get in and do something uh, arbitrary in a company, but that's usually not the point. And why not? Because most companies, most companies in a large office building, literally have the toilets outside the offices, down the hall, in a very safe place. They're incredibly well cleaned most of the time. And here's the truth, that literally it is a fundamental human right under the global charter of human rights that people have the right to a toilet. Now, does this sound more practical? Do I sound more like Annie Rooney saying, what the hell is going on with these people with toilets? Now, I could say something else about toilets, that literally I prefer to be led in my life to toilets that are the old-fashioned kind, where literally I can flush the toilet all by my lonesome, and if some moron forgot to flush the toilet, or illegally, and I would say illegally just because who the hell wants to look at someone else's BM? But that's just me. There are Chinese people that destroy toilets. I've seen it. I watched it. I've had it happen in front of me where they literally go in, make a disastrous poop in a toilet, and they leave it there for everybody else to see. They overflow the toilet. They lock the door so they literally climb underneath the door. And I've seen this guy do this. And I was just like, oh, my God, how do we let this person in our country? But maybe he was born and bred here, and that's even a little scarier. But let's get back to the reality of Annie Rooney's concept of making fun of some of these things that don't make sense. In a restaurant, in an office building, the toilet should be literally at the front of the facility. You don't want somebody who you haven't fully met yet to be tramping through your offices, back to your personal break rooms, and going through people's stuff, looking through their belongings in the moment of time when they're left alone to hit the toilet. You want toilets right at the front entrance, literally almost right off the front entrance, just like sort of in a doctor's office, where once you step in, they're right there. Why? Because you want people under your eyes set. You want to know they went in, they did their business, they left. And that's truly a grace of God. Now, 
Why am I talking about toilets? Because there are toilets that actually have automatic flushers, and I often wonder, is there a camera in there photographing our private parts as we sit there and poop so they can figure out how to make a better toilet? I don't think so, because there is a far much more comfortable seat that's usually out there in public places, but for some reason, in America, we don't actually use them. Now, in Japan, there is no facility of a toilet. You actually have to look for a Western stall to be a throne-like situation like ours. Otherwise, what you do is a very interesting balancing act. And I learned it a long time ago when I lived in Japan. There's literally a something that looks sort of like a urinal in the floor. The head, as my father came out one time and said, which way am I supposed to face, is actually the direction you face. But taking your pants down, pulling them out of the way so that you can take what they feel is the most natural aspect of life in terms of how the body should curve and in order to get that best BM coming out of you is sort of comical and sort of a little bit of a balancing act because practically you have to pull your pants into your kneecaps, squat so that they stay there, make sure your wallet doesn't fall to the back of your pocket and literally then sit there, hold your balance without holding on to anything that's probably been pissed on by somebody who was drunk and didn't uh, squat or end at all and literally try and take and relieve yourself. Now, I'm obviously making fun of toilets a little bit, but I'm practically saying, look, this is a marketing technique. This is a hospitality thing. I love Taco Bells. Why? Because literally I don't have to go in line and order my food and then go make my way to a toilet. I can go in, wash my hands, do my business, put things away, go out to the car, drop my stuff off if I need to change my shirt because I, my mother's really good at telling me that I really sweat profusely, sadly, as a hairy man. But that's okay. I love my hair, so get over it. But anyway, I'm being silly. I'm talking uh, tr truly transparently in this moment in time. Whether I'll cut it out, I can't decide because I want you to laugh occasionally at what I say. But in reality, I don't want anybody photographing me doing any business of mine. That's a total violation of my rights completely and your rights completely. But why do we need automatic toilets? Are we so lazy that we don't remember to flush? I don't think so. Literally every child should be taught and spanked if they don't remember to flush a toilet. And practically every single child should learn how to fix a toilet like I do when I go into places and find them not functioning. I'll literally take the cap off and look in and see if I can make the throttle work and get it going again for the next person. I also think that brushes in the toilet area is really a kindness. And I don't terribly mind all the time having to clean up after someone else's crap all over the back of the toilet. But literally employees who are paid to do this don't always do it. And that's a shame. We literally should be more kind to people in general about these simple everyday bodily functions that every single human being on the face of the earth is required to do by their human body. Now, let's get back to human rights. Human rights are fundamental. Human rights are very clear. Human rights are plenty of articles, plenty of uh, titles, if you will, underneath the human rights campaign that literally Eleanor Roosevelt was the one who promoted long ago. You can look her up. You can look up human rights. But I want you to know this, that toilets are the fundamental aspect of human rights. Clean, practical toilets. I don't remember exactly what the language is. You can certainly go look it up. There's a wonderful website of humanrights.org or something like that that provides lots of great information. But openly, when it comes to our lives, when it comes to the practical daily aspect of being human, we all need a bathroom at that time or two. We all get stranded at a time or two, and literally at our age, when we get older, when we be more mature, it's a little bit harder to handle things sometimes. And if you haven't gotten there yet in your life, God bless. If you have, then feel my pain. I literally know that if I don't get somewhere very quickly, very soon, I might have an accident. Now, how do I know something about this? Because my father, rest his soul, had a problem. He had something called Parkinson's PSP, which is supranuclear palsy. He started to lose functioning on, and control of his particular situation. Now, that was pretty tough on my mom because she really struggled through the entire grieving process, which any social scientist, any normal human being can look up and go, all right, what are the stages of grief? And how she went through the loss of that really significant partner who really could do anything and lift anything and be everything for her. But what we're really talking about in this humble moment of time and me sharing a little bit of my father's story is that sometimes he just couldn't hold it. And if he was in the wrong collar pants, everybody knew it. And he just didn't know or didn't care anymore. And literally, he just said, you know, I'm old, shit happens, and I'm having a problem. And in one moment in time, I was the only person with him. And I literally said, Mom, I'll handle it. And I took care of everything. And it was a disaster, an absolute disaster. But I love my father. And I wasn't going to let him sit there in his feces. It just wasn't going to happen. Thankfully, we all became aware that we always had to have emergency pants, we always had to have emergency diapers, we always had to have all the things that you do when you take care of someone that you love when they're old and gray. And let me tell you this, if that girl ever gives me half a chance, I will love her till the end of time, no matter what life happens to her. 
no matter what gift God gives her in terms of her social ending of lessons in life, of humility, of letting things go, and we all get there. At some point, every single human being will literally let it go and release when they die. That's apparently something a nurse taught me. Now think about that. I've gone from toilets to the passing of people. Now, this has been Blake Hansen of Blaze Communication, talking a little bit like Andy Rooney, an old-time news journalist for one of the stations. I think it was 60 Minutes. He was amazing, but I can't say that for sure. Don't quote me on that, and I probably I just got smacked, and I shouldn't say that because I'm not affiliated with anyone like that at all, and I'd be a luckier fella in the world if I ever got an audio cast with something like that online. But in truth, what I'm really talking about is simply the humility aspect of human beings, that as a human being, we have the little fundamental human right of being able to use a toilet in any place we go. And any restaurant that says you have to buy something in order to use their toilet, like some of the coffee houses of the world, really should be shot completely. Absolutely abhorred what I hear they do to homeless people. If they've never been homeless, those teenagers running behind those counters need to be smacked across their face. That literally it's absolutely almost impossible to find a clean toilet like theirs in the middle of the afternoon when you really just need to have a chance to relieve yourself. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about toilets. I'm talking about toilets in sort of a sarcastic way. I don't get why they're at the back of a restaurant or any facility or even a shopping store. Do you really want people carrying their goods back into the toilet, to hide them into their clothes, to steal them out the door? I don't think so. Why would you put a toilet in the back of a department store? Don't really understand. Put it in the front. Allow people to have to go to the front of the store where there's literally lots of employees at cashiers, rest areas that can totally see what's going on. Now, this has been a silly moment in time. It's not a marketing moment. It's not really a mayhem moment, but it is something that sound effects are really good for. So if you heard that, sorry about that. But openly, we want to really let you know that it is a fundamental human right to utilize the toilet. Let's just leave it on that note. I hope you had a good chuckle through some of this. I am really trying. And if you've got suggestions of topics I should talk about or things I should literally research, I'd be happy to do it. This has been Blake Ensign of Blaze Communications, LLC, with a silly little moment in time about toilets.